Hi and welcome to the Long Road Home. Continuing in Psalm 1 today, or Psalm 2 today, sorry. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. And you shall, not end, you shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Oof. Strong words. It's getting intense. Getting spicy. Let's let's let let's look at this because this is written most likely by this is written by David. The New Testament confirms this is a Davidic psalm. It's also a messianic psalm. So he is, to a degree, talking about himself with the decree um, and becoming becoming God's son. Because um, when we see when we see phrases like "son," a lot of the times in the Old Testament, especially, it's referring to the king, to the anointed king over Israel, right? And that makes sense because Jesus is the anointed one. That's what Christ means. So when we look at this as a messianic psalm, and hopefully this will make sense of uh, of John three sixteen, where it calls Jesus um, the only begotten Son of God, right? So in the same way that David was begotten when he was anointed as king, Jesus was begotten when he was anointed as king, not because he wasn't already God the Son and the Son of God. But because in the role of being the Davidic king over Israel, there was a point where he was begotten, where he was anointed as king. And that was at the baptism with John when the Spirit landed on him like a dove. So in the same way that um, David was anointed by Samuel and the Holy Spirit was on him while he was in the wilderness from there forwards, well, guess what? Um, when Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit, David was anointed by regular oil, and the Holy Spirit was with him, Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit directly. And then he went out and preached in the power of the Holy Spirit, filled with the Spirit and anointed by the Holy Spirit, which is, I believe we see in Luke. Um, so Jesus is the fulfillment of this. And and how do we know that? Because in the same way that Abraham, right, he didn't see the day where all the nations were blessed by his by his nation. He didn't see the day where he owned the land he was he was promised. The land wasn't owned by his family until Moses until I'm sorry, Joshua. And even then it wasn't fully fulfilled. And then the nations weren't blessed by his land until Jesus. And then it went to the nations at Pentecost and through, then on through the book of Acts. But it wasn't fulfilled until the time of Jesus. He was looking forward to the coming of Jesus. To the city that has foundation, whose founder and builder is God. That would be the new Jerusalem. The, ever, the everlasting, the never-ending city of God. Filled with people from every tribe, nation, and tongue without... Without... Um, out the word uh, without uh, without exception every nation for sure uh, and tribe and people and tongue so we look at we look at Jesus as the fulfillment of this and let, let's let's look at these next lines we see that he is um, he is given the nations uh, David wasn't given the nations right just like when we're talking about Abraham not receiving the lands David wasn't given the nations he was given the Philistines that's it Yes, he, he conquered the Philistines, but he wasn't given the nations or the ends of the earth, but someone in his lineage was, and that was Jesus. Jesus ultimately fulfilled the promise that was given to David to receive the nations and the end of the earth. Well, hold on. Well, Jesus isn't ruling and reigning yet. Has that already happened? Well, yes and yes, but no. All It already has happened, but it hasn't been consummated yet. 
Jesus is already ruling and reigning from heaven, but he has not established his rule on this earth with his presence. Not, not his presence through the Holy Spirit, not his presence through the, his omniscience as being as being um, God the Son. I mean his presence as in visible flesh and blood, Jesus reigning on the new heavens and the new earth. That hasn't happened yet. So we haven't seen okay, so what I was saying a second ago with the with the omniscience. Um, Jesus has two natures, human nature and uh, and divine nature, and his divine nature maintains his divine attributes. And his human nature maintains its human attributes. So they can't be mixed and they can't be separated because they're one person, but his natures retain their attributes. Anyway, which makes sense because if you're the eternal son of God and you've always existed, then just because you became a human doesn't mean you, I mean, you're eternal, you're outside of time. So anyway, off on a rabbit trail, but I had to qualify something I'd said. So Jesus is has not consummated his rule. He hasn't established on this earth his rule. Though he is still ruling over this earth, okay? And dashing the nations in pieces, them being given to him as a possession and an inheritance. What does that sound like other than Dan the dream in Daniel of the statue representing the different kingdoms that would be destroyed by a stone that was thrown in the time of the uh, mixed iron and uh, go look up the, the Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the statue in Daniel um, for context. But during the, the, it essentially prophecies that during the time of Rome, we'll have to do some studying to see why I say Rome, but during the time of Rome, a stone will be cut out, not by a human hands, thrown, it'll shatter the stone and then the, the, the stone will grow to fill the entire earth. The stone represents the kingdom of God. It represents the kingdom of God with Jesus as its king. So Jesus as the, the word is federal head. He is the king, he is the authority over the kingdom of God. So the, therefore we can talk about the stone being Jesus and the stone being the kingdom of God. And I'm not gonna, not gonna disagree with either one. But the stone is the kingdom of God with Jesus as its head, and it is cast into the statues. It crumples the statue that represents the major kingdoms of the earth up until then, and then the stone spreads to the entire earth. The kingdom of God is currently spreading to the entire earth, and, and Jesus will one day come and will establish his rule over the entire earth. And everyone who has not bowed the knee up into that time will bow the knee. Why? Because it will be bro broken with a rod of iron and dashed to pieces like a potter's vessel. So it's not just Jesus' authority over them. It's also his justice and his righteousness that will be on the day of his second coming of the, of the final wrath and judgment of God on all mankind. Jesus will not just establish his authority, but he will establish his justice, and he will exact justice on the nations that have been dashed to pieces, and like potter's vessels, like pieces of fractured pottery. And then he will reign over a renewed heaven and a new earth for eternity. Because at the cross was the time when the nations were put in his hand. He was literally crowned the day before that, he was in, well. He was anointed by the Holy Spirit. He was anointed for burial by Mary, and then he was crowned with a crown of thorns. A purple robe was put on him. He was exalted or lifted up with a sign above his head that says, "The King of the Jews." In three languages, he was crowned and ordained as king. And when he returned to heaven. When he, when he died, when he went down in the grave, he gathered up his people. When he returned to heaven, he, he threw open the gates of heaven and ushered in, ushered in all who were in him. And he is, when he ascended to heaven, when he ascended to heaven, he sat upon the throne of glory beside the Father and ruled and reigned eternally in bodily form. as the king over everything. And that happened on the cross. And it was constant.
consummated initially after his resurrection and finally with his second coming. God bless you on your long road home.